Hello. I'm doing this video a little differently than I normally do my cute little vlogs because this past trip that we went on to Calgary, Banff, and Yoho was a little bit different in several ways than trips normally are. And in particular, I watched a lot more videos than I normally do about Banff and we talked to a lot more people than we normally do prior to getting to our location. Like oftentimes we talked to locals, etc. We talked to several friends who had actually been there um, to Banff specifically in 2022 to kind of get their advice. Basically, after all the videos that I watched and talking to people, I felt super stressed out about the amount of people that I was expecting to see at Banff and just like how touristy it would be. So I wanted to make this video hopefully actually trying to be a little bit helpful for people who are looking to travel and may or may not be um, travelers like me and my husband. Um, I do want to caveat this video with a couple of things. The first thing to know is that I, I usually plan our trips and I've learned because we are both full-time PhD students and we work full-time. I've learned to kind of see what's out there, plan a rough itinerary for each day, but we're very flexible people. Like if we have to do work or if we have to, I don't know, we, we had to stay up late to do work so we, have, we sleep in or whatever it might be. Um, so, so we're not people that have like a set agenda every single day it's like fully stacked the other thing to note is that we are self-proclaimed second wave hikers which means that we are not people that wake up and go on a hike at like four o'clock in the morning to beat the crowd it's just not gonna happen we've done it once in uh maine and in it that was fine but that's just really not who we are so i do kind of want to caveat it with that because i think those things are kind of important to what made our trip actually work out so well um so let's just jump into the trip the first main thing that happened to us was we had bad weather on our flight from dc to toronto so we had a flight both ways that went dc to toronto to calgary and then calgary toronto to dc we flew our canada i did not know at the time that i guess Toronto is one of the worst airports, one of the worst international airports for cancellations and delays. Um, now, the, on the way there, it was not their fault. It really was due to weather. We were delayed by four hours because we had thunderstorms. And so we missed our layover flight to Calgary, which meant that we had to stay the night in Toronto. But by the time that we were actually able to fly out, land, and get to a hotel, Air Canada automatically booked us on a 6 a.m. flight the next day. So we had about three hours to sleep before we had to wake up and get back to the Toronto airport. That was a really brutal start to the trip. And I should also mention that our trip had been planned that we were going to arrive Thursday night and then we were going to leave on Monday afternoon. So we had a really short time to be in Alberta um, and we knew that going into it so it was you know it was definitely a little bit frustrating and upsetting to kind of have missed out on our flight but there we were so we made our flight from Toronto to Calgary on like again like three hours of sleep we landed we got our groceries shopped a little bit and then we went back to our Airbnb and we had to nap just because we knew that we needed more than three hours of sleep. I was kind of feeling a little bit okay about it because the weather was actually supposed to be pretty crummy um, in Banff and Yoho where we were looking to go for that full day or what should have been a full day. But unfortunately for me, that really didn't work out because the weather was actually beautiful. We ended up sleeping, I don't know, I think about like two and a half hours. Um, taking a nap and then we headed out to Yoho National Park because um, we didn't really have enough time, I knew, to do a full hike in Banff. And so I figured if we're going to go to Banff and we're not going to you know, be able to do like a hike or whatever, let's use Friday, we'll go to Yoho, we'll do a full hike. And it should be less crowded, it should be really stress-free, like that, that was kind of the plan that we had outlined. Well, we didn't end up really leaving our Airbnb until like 3-ish, I think, 3.30. Um, and it was about a two and a half hour drive to Yoho. So we didn't get to Yoho until about 5.30, which I know sounds crazy, but the sun does not set there until about 9.30. So we knew that we had a decent amount of time to like see Emerald Lake, do a decent hike, like a seven mile hike. Now, we were able to get our national parks pass for the whole weekend without waiting in line because it was Friday and no one, I guess, was going to the parks. Um, so we were able to drive straight through, get our parks pass, which meant that we did not have to drive through like the gate check to buy our pass over the weekend, which was a huge time saver. I think it saved roughly about 30 minutes, 
which I know doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're pressed for time, like every minute really does count. So it was nice just over the weekend to not have to worry about that. Coffee break. We got to Emerald Lake. It was beautiful. I had been dreaming about going to this part of the world for a while. So like seeing it in person was just incredible. And we were shocked at how few people really were there. Like I was kind of expecting, oh, like you take pictures of the lake and you have to like I'm sure people like edit, you know, people on, like canoes and paddle boards and things out, but there really wasn't anyone there. Like there, there were people there, but most of them were leaving again. It was like 5.30, 5.45. We ended up doing um, the hike there at Emerald Lake, which I think is like Emerald Basin. Um, it was about seven miles round trip. And what, basically what you do is you end up walking the entirety of the lake, but you also kind of do an offshoot trail and you kind of hike up and then you get views of Emerald Basin. Um, and when we did the offshoot trail, there really wasn't, honestly, there really wasn't anyone around the lake either. But when we did the offshoot trail, I'm not joking you, we saw one other couple when we were at the basin. Um, so we did that entire trail basically out there on our own, which was incredible. Like it was amazing views, a great hike and no tourists, like no one there. So, so that was just like so incredible to do. I know that like the touristy things were like the main lakes in Banff is what people get really excited about, but honestly, like you can get those like views without tourists there. So, you know, it's all about your preference, like what you're really going there for. We were going to see like beautiful lakes and, and do hikes, and so this was perfect for us. The other great thing about Emerald Lake is that there is a lodge right there, which means that there is a restaurant and like a bar area. And so right when you finish the hike, because it, you know, the lake is obviously circular you just dead end into this lodge which was fantastic and so we were able to like stop in the lodge it was super cute get dinner get drinks it was just a fantastic day and i i felt so much better it kind of was like you know if we didn't get to do anything else on the trip i felt really really happy about it so that was awesome um we didn't end up getting back home until like 11 30 close to midnight because again like we finished the trail up at like i don't know probably like nine-ish realistically and then we got dinner and everything um and the bar closed at 10 i believe so it was a late night for us we were super tired didn't get a lot of sleep stayed up really late totally worth it i recommend so again this is kind of my thing about second wave hiking where it's like could we have gone earlier in the day yes would we have gotten more out of the day yes that would have been awesome because there's a lot more to see than just obviously one hike but when you do hike a bit later you tend to kind of be the only one out there on the trail which is for us at least a huge bonus because we we do not like to be around people <laughs> when we're hiking so day two was the day of the concert so we had the lumineers concert that started around seven i think in downtown calgary so what we did was we just drove to canmore because that was only like a little over an hour from our airbnb in calgary and we did breakfast we got coffee we did a little hike there and it was absolutely perfect we had incredible weather found parking very easily on the street um, and just kind of enjoyed the day there. Then we drove back to Calgary, got ready, and ate dinner in downtown and went to the concert. So that day, like in my opinion, is kind of a wash, but just for some info, um, Canmore was really cute, very cute little town. Uh, the hike there was quite easy. You can like walk along the lake there. The water's beautiful and you get mountain views. It was it was really great. Then Sunday, so this was the only actual like full day we had to like go drive out, be in the mountains and hike and, and do whatever we wanted. And so for this day, what we did actually Saturday night, I looked and I booked us tickets on the Banff gondola because I knew that we weren't going to have again enough time to do like a, an extensive Banff hike hike and also we were afraid of Taurus. So we booked the gondola, which I know sounds a little bit ridiculous, but it was actually quite funny. Ridiculous meaning that like we don't want to be around Taurus. Um, our waiter at the restaurant at the top of the mountain there of, of the gondola basically said like, yeah, this area isn't really packed when the weather is nice because people want to be outside. So we were able to get tickets on the gondola there really wasn't that many people there. We were able to just walk into the restaurant without any reservations and get a seat right on the glass um, wall there where it's like all windows is the wall. Like beautiful views, incredible food, great drinks. We had such a good time. And then we walked out, we did the observation deck at the top of the mountain there, which again was really nice. And, and this was like the closest we had to kind of being like around a bit of a crowd. And, and tourists and things like that but the views were great and it really I don't think was honestly that busy for like what it could have been and then we rode the gondola back down and then I think this is probably like 
Along with the Emerald Lake and Yoho kind of tip or approach that we took, I think this was a fantastic approach to getting on the water. I was adamant that we got on the water when we were out there because it's just absolutely beautiful. I knew it would be freezing, but it, it's just, it's gorgeous. And I knew from talking to people that the um, canoes and stuff like at Marine Lake and Lake Louise was going to be pretty crowded. Like you might have to wait in a line for over an hour just to even get your canoe, etc. And we just didn't have that kind of time or, or desire to do that really. So what we did instead was we rented paddle boards. And I think that this was such like a great idea if you're people like us like you don't mind paddle boarding um or having to like carry anything like on your backpack because these were inflatable paddle boards so you could actually take them to whatever like you wanted to which is another um great thing about them um we went into downtown bam we just got off the mountain where the gondola was we went into downtown we didn't make any reservations we just walked into like a gear mountain ski gear store and we rented two stand up paddle boards again they are the inflatable kind so you kind of get them and they're like wrapped up in a bag and you can carry them on your um, back they're basically in a backpack we're able to drive to a lake we went to two jack lake and we had a list of three lakes that we thought were really good candidates just with the views and being less touristy, etc. And then when we got our paddle boards, Ryan asked the guy there like what he recommended and, and he also recommended Two Jack, which was the, at the top of our list. So we felt really good about it. So we drove there, it was about a 15 minute drive from downtown Banff. We inflated our, our paddle boards and we got out on the lake and there really honestly weren't that many people there. It was so awesome. Most people were honestly paddle boarding as well because there wasn't anywhere to rent canoes there like the other touristy lakes. And so people who were on that lake were people who already had the gear themselves. So it was mainly kayaks and paddle boards. And again, really wasn't a lot of people out there. Um, they don't allow motorized boats out there. So the water was very still. It was perfect. We were able to like take a little dip in the water, which was <laughs> freezing, but it was so much fun. Um, and so that's just kind of the other little like tip I have if you want to get on the water but you've seen um, the videos talking like the lines to get out on the more, more touristy lakes like running a canoe and all that stuff. These were super cheap as well. You could get them for all day and again you could pick the lake that you wanted to go to. So like in theory you could have like gone to Banff rented those paddle boards and then driven into Yoho or wherever and gotten on the lake there. So that was really our trip like it was so great we had very where well, we were on a very constrained like timeline and we didn't have a lot of like reservations booked or anything like that but it, it all kind of worked out and so that was another reason why i wanted to make the video is like if you are someone that's looking to go into the area and you're feeling kind of nervous about it or you don't have a lot of time whatever it may be i would just completely avoid the main touristy areas the lakes there like don't even worry or stress about like finding a parking spot things like that there's so many beautiful places out there that like is it the exact same view no but it's basically the same view and you get it to yourself which again in our opinion was what we valued more so yeah that was really all i had to share it wasn't that much we weren't there for very long but Hopefully that was helpful if you are considering going on a trip there um, to be able to explore the area. Again, it's just, it's so big, like there's so much to do and see there. So definitely don't worry about getting caught up in the uh, long waits and no parking spots in touristy areas. So um, yeah, anyways, thanks so much for watching and hope this was helpful.